All right. So, hi everybody. Welcome to Speak Orientation. Um, my name is Megan Wynn. I am a GIS researcher and the communications coordinator for the Center for Watershed Sciences on campus. I graduated as an environmental policy and planning major. And when I was in school, my passion was to be the bridge between science and policy. And the bridge that I found most effective was science communication. So here we are today with this brand new program that we're launching this year, which is called SPEAK. And SPEAK stands for Scientists for Public Engagement and Knowledge. But what does that really mean and what is our mission? Well, what I want to do in at Watershed is that we want to... Uh, my slide go? Oh, there it is. Um, we want to make science um, accessible engaging and influential. What does each of these words mean though? Accessible means we want science to be easy to understand for anyone and everyone at all levels and remove the barriers to understanding what science is. Engaging. We need to find new and innovative and interesting ways to uh, deliver science. Uh, no more long papers with long jargon. We need more visuals and pictures and interesting descriptions. And influential. We want our science to make a difference in the world. Uh, so we need to figure out ways to package our science in a way that positively influence policy change. Oh, my fun little graphic about what science communication kind of looks like. <laughs> so now let's talk about some misconceptions people have about science communication. Um, number one, science is only for scientists. This is false. Science is for everybody. You may have heard the phrase that we need to dumb down science um, in order for the general population to understand. Well, this is not true. We're finding more and more every day that people have the capacity to understand complex scientific um, concepts. But what needs to happen is that we need to engage them at the most basic level first and then we hook them in by establishing a connection, you know, that wow factor that some science research has. And then once we do that, that opens up the opportunity to draw them in so they stick around for the more longer concepts. If you have any questions at any time, feel free to ask me as well. Misconception number two, my science needs to be special. This is also false. You might think that your science is not special, but if it's something you're passionate about, then it is special. People respond to human emotion and they can sense when you're passionate about something and that alone will make them want to hear what you have to say. So for example, I'm a GIS researcher and what that means is I could say I make maps and I sit in front of my computer and I just kind of doodle on my computer and connect these spatial mumbo jumbo, whatever. But if instead I said, I like to tell stories through maps. I can connect whatever is happening in the world visually and share that with the world. That is much more interesting than saying I make maps. So if it's special to you, it's something worth sharing about. Misconception number three, I need to be a published, I need to be published to be a credible scientist. Once again, this is also false. We're finding more and more that most people actually don't go to graduate school. Um, there's a study that said in the U.S. only about 9% of the population have master's degrees and only 3% have Ph.D. degrees. So, um, yes, maybe in the long term you might need to publish a paper uh, to establish credibility if you're really going to be an academic. But the fact that you are here today shows me that you have positive intentions to want to communicate science. And as long as you use trusted sources, you can be a trusted sort of, um, ambassador for science. And it's important to remember that science communication is a skill, not a talent. And just like with any skill, you can, uh, with hard work and practice, you can further develop your skill and master it. And Speak can provide you the tools and resources to help um, develop those faster. Okay, so now we have to do a little activity. Um, turn to someone next to you and try to describe your work, your research, your studies, or something you learned in class today. Um, and 
do it in under one minute. I'll time you guys and uh, then we'll have the opportunity to switch. But let's use that activity quickly. Okay, so find your partner and then your one minute starts now. Volunteers, uh, if you to um, explain your partner's work in one headline sentence. Volunteers, a brave soul in the audience. Yes, please state your name and then go ahead. And I'm Chris, and my partner um, is a fish physiology teacher. And um, I have Okay. Um, all right. Fish, fish, say that again. Fish, physiology major. Got it. All right. Um, anyone else want to share? Yes. I'm Sam. This is my uh, partner, Nate, and he studies All right. Cool. That's, yes. I like how you said plant immune systems, then you said plants that we eat. Or that's, really good use of um, non-science jargon. Um, anyone else, one more? Okay, how about um, describing that process? Was it hard to, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, to think about like, you know, maybe they said a lot of things to me, but I wasn't able to summarize it in a sentence? Is that, do we find that? Okay, so the purpose of this activity was to kind of show how um, sometimes as scientists, we're used to being bombarded with lots of information and we want to share all the information like this is um, all the wonderful stuff I'm doing. But what the public kind of cares about is just that one, um, you know, that why should I care that wow thing. And um, oh, we could mute. I'll, I'll mute them myself. There we go. Thank you. Um, but I have a slide later that kind of just shows that process about what, um, why it's so hard for scientists uh, to flip their mind and, and start with the why should I care. Um, we'll have a chance to for you guys for the other partners to do that a little later. Okay, next moving on. Um, Okay, so um, again, the public really wants to just, they care about only a few things, their capacity attention is so limited. Um, and as scientists, we have so much information we wanna give, but we wanna find that sweet spot right in the middle where the, um, we can make that connection. 
Okay. So um, at Watershed, we, um, yes, we are a center for watershed related things, but if you are a researcher and you really want to, um, you have a cool project that you want to do, and may not necessarily be around water, like plants or uh, physiology, fish physiology, that's like perfect right underneath our umbrella. Um, but I just want to remind you that we offer resources that are free and for you. Um, and don't be shy to, uh, to come up with, come to us with questions. And um, we also have, we're also pretty um, active in the social media circle. So we have um, Facebook, uh, which is one of our uh, platforms. We also tweet a lot. And we'll talk about one of the workshops that we offer is social media for um, science. And we also have our California water blog, which um, has over 10,000 readers. Um, and this is a really powerful tool. Um, don't underestimate the power of a good blog. Um, it's a really good way to package uh, research into a, a nice readable form. So I want to give you, show you an example of how a Speak alumni um, can start from having zero science communication experience to uh, what the possibilities are. So this is Jeanette Newmiller. She is a recent master's graduate. And uh, she uh, made this augmented reality sandbox. And she takes it to classrooms and teaches uh, young kids that engineering is cool and the possibility of science. And she showed me this project and I was like, this is so awesome. I'm gonna, I just pulled out my phone and started recording her and then stitched together a pic, um, a video that I will show you. And because of this video, she got featured on NPR Science Friday. They came to Mandavi, they invited a bunch of researchers, they played the game, showed the sandbox, and that was really cool. She's also uh, been written in Science News for Students um, and receives tons of requests all the time for um, her to come and build uh, a sandbox, just like the Woodland City Council has asked her to build a sandbox for the city, um, or send resources so that they can build their own sandbox. So I'll play this video right now. Uh, one second, it's muted. Okay, it starts over. Yeah, so um, we actually have one built in the um, in the watershed lobby. So if you ever find yourself in the south end of campus, you should come visit us and you can play with a sandbox yourself. Any questions so far? All right, let's keep moving on. So um, not only will you have access to watershed resources, we also partner up with um, some organizations on campus and outside. 
So one of our biggest partners is UC Davis Strategic Communications. Um, most, some of our presenters will be from uh, Stratcom on campus. Compass is a science communication organization um, and they lead like heavy duty training. So if you really want um, to really get involved, Compass is a great resource. Uh, Skype a scientist. So this is a program run through NPR's Friends of Joe's Big Idea, which is a huge Slack community. If you're on Slack and you want to be invited to this, highly recommend this. Um, and I will also post, uh, if you wrote your emails on the sign-in sheet, I can send you my presentation and as well as the recording so you, you can have all this information. And these are all links as well. Um, but the Skype a Scientist program, what's cool about this is that it can connect scientists to classrooms that would never see a scientist. Uh, for example, just recently, one of our researchers, Ann Willis, um, she is an engineering master's student, and she recently uh, Skyped with a classroom in Kentucky where they have never really met a water engineer, let alone a female scientist. So the fact that we can connect these two together was a really cool, and they asked lots of cool questions. We took them around uh, our building, showed them the sandbox, they loved it. Uh, they were like, can we play with it? But obviously they're hundreds of miles away, so that wasn't possible. But they can learn how to build one on their own. Um, but Skype a scientist, really cool idea, connecting scientists to classrooms. Um, so this is an overview or calendar of all the workshops that we will offer this year. And I'll go through them individually, each one. But I have digital flyers as well as printed flyers on the table outside. So make sure you pick one up and attend. Um, so November 17th, mark this one on your calendar because this is arguably, I would say, the most important one and the next one uh, workshop. So this is with Kat Curlin, who is the environmental reporter for Stratcom. And her workshop's gonna be called Commuting Science and Building Trust. And this is what I was talking about earlier, this diagram. So as scientists, we're used to starting off um, in this inverted pyramid, where we start with general background um, observations, then we narrow it down to what okay, this is what our hypothesis is, this is the details um, that support my claim, and then we end with our results conclusions, why this matters, okay? But when we're communicating science, we need to flip that, flip our mind frame, and we need to start with the bottom line, which is, why should I care? What's that wow factor? Then, once we establish that first connection, then they have that interest to stay around longer, and learn why this is cool, and then you can give them all the wonderful background details after. Any questions about that? All right. Um, next workshop is social media, December 1st. So it can be challenging to try to um, squeeze all your research into 140 characters. Like, for example, you see this huge poster Lots of charts going on. And I went up to um, my colleague Arthur and I asked him, so like, why should I care about this? And it took us a few tries, but after we developed this tweet together, and basically his re research just says like, conservation works. Wherever they um, put conservation um, efforts in their studies, they saw that a lot of the species came back. So that's great. That's what the, care the um, public cares about. Um, next set of workshops will be visual storytelling. So if you want to learn how to make the video just like the sandbox video, um, there's two workshops that you can attend. The first one on January 19th is how to plan your story. What makes a good story, um, how to set it up, storyboarding, things like that. Then the second part is more technical. Um, that's when we'll teach you how to use the software, how to edit, what are some good shots to take, um, things like that. Questions about that? Okay, moving on. Um, February 2nd, we have public speaking or presentations with Ann Willis. Pretty self-explanatory, um, but if you need some public speaking tips, and what is nice about Speak is that we will create this like safe space for you guys to practice with each other. So you may think that um, you are like really good at public speaking. Well, I encourage you to come anyways, because maybe your experience can help teach someone else. 
or you can always practice. So there's that. Next is March 2nd, um, op-ed editorials, opinion editorials, and blog writing. Now, if you really, really want to, if you have a really cool idea and you want to share it, um, I encourage you. We have the California Water Blog, like I said, over 10,000 readers. And you don't need to have cutting edge research to share something worth, like, that has a wow factor. For example, I live in Sacramento, and I commute to Davis every day for work. And in February, when we had lots of rainstorms, the Yolo Bypass was flooded. You could see, it was like an inland sea, right? You can see water as far as I could see. And as I'm driving to work every day, I'm like, this is, you know, I, I see this every day. This is kind of cool. I know a little bit about it because at Watershed we do some work, but I'm sure a lot of people might not know this. And with the um, failure of the Oroville Dam, I think a lot of people were kind of scared about flooding. So I hit the books, I wrote a blog about the Yola Bypass, and I've gotten a lot of replies from it. Um, people have asked me to come speak. Um, over 10,000 people have read it. It was like our third best blog of this year, which is cool. And I'm writing against like other, you know, faculty tenured professors. And, but my blog, I'm just like a, I don't know, a bachelor's of science um, graduate. And I just like was able to write this really interesting blog and it was timely. So never underestimate the power of a good blog. And you don't need to have the cutting edge research. You just need to um, be interested in something. We can help you write a good blog. So that's a really helpful workshop. Any questions about that? All right. Um, April 6th, we will have communicating science for policy. So policymakers, they really care about a few things. So what are those things? Well, you find out by attending this workshop. We have invited um, a guest from the Public Policy Institute of California, PPIC, one of our uh, collaborators. And she has a lot of experience in this uh, area and a lot of wonderful things to share. And May 4th, we have infographics. So, uh, Joe Proudman, the same guy who did the visual storytelling, will come back and teach us how to make good infographics. And visuals are a really great way to uh, get people hooked in. Uh, any questions so far? Um, how about those attending virtually? Are there any questions? Feel free to chat them or speak aloud. Unmute yourself. I'll just keep going. No questions? Thumbs up if you're like excited about science communication so far after ever hearing what I've said. Awesome, okay. So just a few last announcements and then um, I'll let you guys go. So once again, a reminder, our next workshop is Friday, November 17, 2 to 4 p.m. It's a little longer because we'll have an interactive activity where you can actually practice. We'll have more worksheets that you can fill out um, and um, I will send links to register um, after this meeting or after this event. If you signed up for the mailing list, you'll get that. So make sure you put your email in the sign-in sheet. Um, I want to show you where on our website all these resources are found. So this is the, our website. And let me... So we'll just temporarily. Okay, so if you go to the watershed website, it looks like this. Um, if you click on the outreach tab, it'll take you to speak. You can also just slash speak and it'll take you right there. So here I will post links for you to sign up. Um, you can add our Google Calendar by clicking on this button. It'll just automatically sync your calendar to our calendar so you'll never miss a workshop. Um, and once you go to these um, events, if you click on it um, in the description, if you don't see all of it, you can click more details and it will take you to the event where you can um, access the links to sign up and register. Um, here, once I create the page um, after this workshop, you will find all recorded um, future workshops located here in the resource links.
then you can refer back to them, you can point your friends to them, uh, whatever. They're there for your use. Um, also have the calendar handy, so if you ever lose it, you'll always have access to it. My contact information is also on here, so feel free to send me a message at any time. Um, Okay. Um, we are also launching a program called River Forms. And this is meant for a really low key discussion, like no PowerPoints ever, we promise, only discussion. So if you want a little bit more practice or just want to be in a room where um, there's no judgment and no, what conference room rules, like whatever happens in here just stays in here. So it kind of just removes all the barriers. Um, you can uh, speak freely. Um, but the topic that we have this year it, or this month is in stream flows, um, specifically related to Seven. So if you want to come, um, the RSVP link is here and you can download the paper to read a little bit more information beforehand before you show up. But it's a really great way for you to speak with other scientists and kind of just like really get to understand more science. Because uh, we not only are we trying to communicate science to the public, but we need to be able to communicate science to each other. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for coming. And I'm sticking around a little bit if you have any questions. I hope to see you in November 17th. Thank you.